five, four, three, two, one, go. Hard right onto gravel. An easy left. It's a bump. Crest. Easy left, crest. Half right. Medium right of crest. What's up, Simmers? Larry TJ or Sam here. Today I want to do the review, my final review on the Sim Magic. Uh, TDRS is the handbrake, hydraulic handbrake that is, uh, that I have mounted up to the rig. Hopefully you saw the unboxing of it, of the DSX8, uh, D DS8X shifter, <laughs> H-Batter shifter, and then of course the uh, handbrake as well. Uh, if not, go check out that video and see the unboxing, how it all comes packaged up. I bought both of these from, um, from Apex Sim Racing. Uh, they're over in New Jersey, so I'm over here in Texas, but shipping was actually really fast. I was surprised uh, how quick it got to me within three days. Uh, so I was expecting more like five, but ah, maybe I got lucky. But either way, uh, it came over pretty fast. So I've uh, been enjoying this handbrake for quite a, quite a while here, three weeks uh, now. So yeah, I got some really good impressions of it. So let's jump into it, see how it fares out. All right. All right, so let's jump into it. I'm going to keep me out of the picture. You don't need to see my face. So here is the Sim Magic uh, TBRS. This is a hydraulic shifter, very smooth action, but I'm gonna divide this up into some sections here. We'll go over the software, the pros, cons, how it feels, and my conclusion on this. But yeah, let's, uh, let's first knock out the software of it. All right, so we're in the software section here. <clears throat> here, of course, you can see the handbrake listed up on the, uh, on the far right here. Uh, we'll go ahead and click on this. This is, of course, on the home page. You also can find it under devices as well. Uh, handbrake there. Now, I have my settings. You may have already seen this in some of my other videos as far as the review goes for the Simagic Alpha 2 here. But just to cover this quickly in here, you have this, uh, the basic abilities to set everything up here. So you have the, the position of the handbrake. So when you're giving it a pull here where you want the handbrake to be fully locked. Now, haven't noticed here there's a dead zone linearity so you instead of doing it in game you could do it here live and it actually has some little numbers there you can see very very well so that's like 10.1 uh percent of, of pools but you can set that wherever you want so if you have a little bit of dead zone uh, a little drag in, in game instead of doing it in game you could quickly come over to the software and do it there uh, also you have of course all the little curves and stuff that you can pick uh, if you choose to of course Generally, just go a straight up, a linear, linear, uh, straight line here. Uh, I do actually set my my position as far as full lock, all the way to the left as far as it'll go, just so I don't have to pull the shifter quite as far to take out some of that distance on it. Uh, I kind of like that as well. And uh, you can uh, shorten that up as well with some elastomers in there. The harder elastomers you put into this uh, into this shifter uh, or this uh, handbrake, you can actually shorten up the travel a little bit as well because uh, they do have one metal one or aluminum one rather in there that will help shorten it up. But as you see here, the white line is showing my position of the handbrake of where I have it, which is 99% you know, right there. And then the red line is is, of course, uh, bumping the signal up to represent a hundred degree, hundred uh, percent full lockup. So, but yeah, and it returns quick. I've heard some people when you let go of it, it doesn't return back as quick. I have no problem with that. There's no even delay in the software itself. So that's really good. Now, I have, I got uh, curious about the haptic system here. So I bought the haptic motor on here afterwards from uh, Apex. Uh, I would, like I said, mentioned before, and I would have probably bought it in the beginning, but they were out of stock. But again, they came in the stock. And when you watch this video, they may be in stock again or out of stock. They keep going in and out. It's very popular uh, little motors here. But on this one under feedback, you can click the vibrate. You might be able to hear it. Let me see. Quite loud <laughs> there for as far as the vibration go. But you can set your range of what you want that you can't probably pick up on the camera. But what I've noticed is 100% is really where I want it, and I just adjust the frequencies. It's kind of odd uh, how this actually feels in your hand. I mean, you feel it, 
But when you're actually in game, uh, I have a hard time feeling it at 30 hertz. It vibrates quite a bit. Uh, 29, 30 hertz is where I like it. But if you come up a little bit higher, maybe 38 hertz, it's very quiet, which I like that better. However, I don't feel it in my hand when I'm going to full lockup so much when it's this high of a hertz. So uh, you may have to just adjust that to your feel of what, what you normally would feel. But 29, 30 hertz uh, seems to work really good for me. Anything a little less, it, it seems too much like a, uh, a, a slow shooting machine gun. <laughs> Maybe you can hear it now. Much slower of a uh, impact, each little vibration of this motor going, or this uh, this hat inside this chamber here going back and forth. But uh, anyway, try, try it out for yourself. All in all, it's a really cool little device. These sell like hotcakes. People put them on their brake brakes as well. A lot of mods out there you can do to adapt these to different brake pedals as well. So you can check on that. Of course, just use the rear lock set up here. You can actually, this is adaptable to a program called Sim, Sim Hub as well. I did try that as well in there. Although I found that it was much weaker in Sim Hub than it was using the Sim Pro Manager. And uh, what I found was there's a little bit of a bug or something out there going on that people reported that it was less, uh, less haptic feedback with these motors at that particular release that I was testing out. So, but I uh, obviously, um, I went back to, of course, to just use the Sim Pro Manager here. It works fine. It gets the job done. I only need it to lock up for the rear wheel. But I think uh, if uh, I might go back and try, try out the Sim Hub software again later on. And within that software, you can change different things. When you make a shift, uh, you can make this thing you know, vibrate when you do shifts. And so that might be pretty handy when I'm grabbing shifts with, say, the DSX 8 shifter. So that's another reason why you might want this haptic motor is uh, you can uh, do things like that. So uh, kind of neat. So you look over here, if you were to grab a shift with the with the, your, your H pattern shifter here, this motor would of course then vibrate uh, on those shifts. So, but you could do that in the Sim Hub software. But uh, like I said, I wasn't getting it to work uh, correctly for me. It was too weak uh, for me to feel through my hands. But all in all, uh, it's a really cool device. It looks badass on here actually. You want to bling out your rig this is a or your handbrake which is already pretty damn blingy as it is uh yeah, it's a nice little addition there all right so let's get on to the next let's go to the pros next get into the pros here i took me off the camera it's not important uh here you got a, a nice nestle of sim magic products here the h pattern i'm sorry the h pattern shifter back here q1 here and then the hydraulic handbrake here as well now this puppet goes for 369 which is a little bit on the expensive side at first glance. However, once you're looking at what you're getting here, a hydraulic uh, cylinder, a lot of elastomers here that you can uh, use. And I'm pretty sure there's gonna be a combination that you will like between all these elastomers plus the elastomers that are in the cylinder already. Uh, the ability to add a haptic motor to it if you want to as well, which of course is extra money for that uh, as well. But you have that ability right all aluminum construction very well built you know well there's a slight little play here left left to right barely uh, of course you never feel that in action but having such a smooth hydraulic feel on this uh are really just the last ones being really smooth as well we'll get into this this feeling here in a little bit but all in all it's a really good package considering that if you were let me bend down and pick this up if you were to get say Husenfeld, now this is the the older generation of the Husenfeld uh, setup, but the newer one, which looks nicer than this one, is 313. And this is, and the Magic is 369. So they're going for the high end. This is a high end uh, handbrake, right? No, no doubt about it. But it's high end with just not just elastomers, it also has the hydraulic feel, which we'll get into if you actually feel that here later. But anyway, all in all, very good. Very professional looking. The aesthetics here, the anodization on here is superb. Uh, especially between products here, when you start looking at anodization for parts, a lot of times you, you want to get anodized parts all from the same batch because there'll be a slightly different hue or tint to them if you're in between different batches. Well, they do a really good job on controlling their anodization process of aluminum uh, because you know, I'm sure these are, aren't from the same batches, but they all look exactly the same red. So. Really good, I like that, kudos to that. This mounts very easily, of course. I got it mounted here. You've probably seen in other videos where I have it mounted straight up. You have this adjustable lever here, so you have two, 
you have this screw hole here, which is straight up. I can also push it forward a little bit, uh, which would be this next one here. And all you do is loosen up this one on both sides and pull this one out on both sides and uh, ready to go. You can just adjust this where you want it, forward one, which is handy, especially when you had, had it mounted up here or if you have this mounted a different way in your rig, it would maybe be handy. I actually wish there was another adjustment uh, to where I could pull this further back to me, getting away from my rig as much, that would be kind of nice. So you basically have to have this, uh, you, you don't see it here, but there's a little bit of indention here as, as I shove my finger in here of this, of this rod, right? And if this was thicker, this whole rod was thicker, with another hole in there, it would give me more adjustment to position, say, that hole that's closer to this end further back to here, which would allow me to tilt this handle back to me a little bit more, maybe making it a little bit more comfortable so I don't have to reach as far for it, uh, especially when I have all these shifters and stuff in the way. <laughs> this isn't a very typical situation in a real car. You either have an H pattern or you have a sequential, but on sim rigs, we have them all. And <laughs> so uh, it would be nice if you had this ability to just tilt this back another 10, 15 degrees. That would be a cool addition to be able to make on this. And I think it'd be easy to do for this uh, for this handle. It just appears to be a aluminum cast version handle here, but very sturdy feeling as well. Uh, it has a little uh, Sim Magic logo at the top that you would have seen in my unboxing video. Rubber handle here actually feels pretty comfortable. I know it's not completely in view here. Uh, let me see, rubber handle. Very comfortable to hold, uh, big enough for, for my hands uh, to hold on here so it does cover up to the top. I do like that. This is a long handle as well, which the nice thing about this is that you know, ratio from your steering wheel to your handbrake is pretty quick and you know, to grab straight when you're driving. I like that because when I mount it down low, I have this long hand, handle to be able to make it easier. And then when you couple that with the different elastomers on here, since you have a longer handle, your moment arm is much higher, which meaning that it takes less force up here to equal greater force down low, right? So I might not like the lightness of this handle, being that it is this long, right? But I can adjust the elastomers to fit my taste. So very good that they include all these elastomers in the kit to, to get something nice for you, right? What else to see? Hydraulic one-to-one -one filling. Now, you can't actually feel this hydraulic feel of this pool. It's, it was odd. I didn't think I'd feel it, right? I didn't think when I was going to grab this bad boy. Aesthetically, it looks amazing, but I was like, oh, wow, I really do feel a difference here between that and my hoots and fill. It's, it's just smoother. It's very tight. It's You don't move this. It does have a, a tad of wobble, right? But it's very, very tight and precise feeling, right? But I was surprised that it it's, uh, had that extra smoothness to it. So then it got me thinking. I was like, well, let me pull out all the elastomers and just put the lightest ones in, which would be the, the black ones, right? So I put all the black ones in there. And then I discovered that, yes, this, this still stays very smooth, especially with the spongy elastomers in there as well. But it's not like when you're compressing the fluid in here that it gets significantly stiffer just from the hydraulic fluid. Because you know, just like your brakes on your car or your handbrake on your car when you're when you're pulling it, you got your pads pushing together that's making all the friction where, i.e. this would be your like, pads, right? Making the friction against your disc to stop. So you, hydraulic is just a mechanism to get you there. Uh, so it works in the same way, which is pretty cool. But I don't know that it's a really, I would tell you now it's not a night and day difference between a hydraulic setup or just an elastomer setup itself. Now, if you're going to stay in a Sim Magic ecosystem and say you got the TB8 version, which is the lower end version of this one, uh, that's non hydraulic and just has an elastomer, and it, it comes with two elastomers actually, similar to this, right? Or the Who's Impel has a different elastomer. This one's way easier to adjust on the fly between elastomers uh, than the other, than the TB1 is. So, when you're looking at some comparisons between, say, the TB1 and this one, you can start to see the quality of why the price came came much higher, right? The other one's a little bit more basic looking, uh, like the Husenfeld is, and uh, the old Husenfeld that is. Uh, but still looks good, but I wouldn't want to review it because I know I wouldn't be happy with it, right? <laughs> so I went for what a more high-end uh, handbrake, which this is definitely a high-end handbrake. But between you getting the all, full aluminum construction, hydraulic, all these elastomers, 
ability to add a haptic uh, to it as well, uh, you can start seeing where the price comes from. Right? So a lot of forethought uh, going into this. Power up through here, all being into one solution. So yeah, really nice. Now, like I said with Elastomers, you can get some nice stages here. There's actually an Elastomer in there that is a solid one. We unscrew this here. One note here is, is uh, you might notice some white grease in here. I put some white grease in here, just some all-purpose grease. You can put some electrical grease in there if you wanted to as well. There's nothing electrical here for it, but just any kind of white all-purpose grease in there. And the reason I did that is because this damn thing squeaks quite a bit when you don't have any grease on there. You hear that tightening up, right? That's normal, but you hear the screeching sound when you don't have any grease on there. So I recommend, recommend add a little bit of grease to it. Now here are the elastomers here. This top one here is a gold one. I just like gold, right? <laughs> but here's the setup that I have, right? And then sometimes this doesn't come out as well, uh, which this is okay because this is the washer, but you always have the washer. Doesn't matter what combination you have, you gotta have nine of them. I thought actually at first, since this one is a little bit thicker than the elastomer is itself, between measuring them, it's just a tad thicker, not much, but I thought, well, maybe I only need, I take one of these away, but that's not true. You have nine of them all together, plus your, plus your bottom uh, washer that you'll always use. But there's a combination here I'm pretty sure that will make you happy. This is one I like, fairly progressive two-stage type feeling to where I got a nice squish going on here. This top one limits my travel a little bit. And then uh, of course it gets progressively harder as well. I've tried other ones. Uh, I've tried them, I don't know. There's tens of thousands of combinations, I think it says on their site, but I've tried a bunch of them and uh, through the through the three weeks and I really ended up settling on this one, which was pretty close to the standard one that came out, that came with it as well, except I switched out to the limit of the travel here with this top gold piece instead of having, I think it was a black one initially up here instead of this one here, so. But yeah, try it out, uh, see if you like it yourself, but pretty good combination. Now, just slides right in there, easy peasy. And you can see now when I push on this lever, it's gonna rise up. So when you have the cap on it, of course you need the cap to have that resistance, right? So really what you're feeling most of your resistance is the elastomer. Right. Uh, you do have some compression of liquid, and then then you're just pushing against elastomer resistance. All in all, really cool little setup here. I like that this is adjustable, so if you do mount it up here, you just turn this this uh, over to the other direction. You might want to tighten it up if you have, have a lot of transducers. This may tend to move a little bit on you. Uh, I didn't have any problem with the full motion rig here with D-Box. Only problem I had is if I just bumped it myself. Uh, so that was all. Now. Hookups on this thing, I don't have it here. I'll put it up on the screen here, but it has an RJ45. I don't have my camera accessible to the other side, so I'll just pump it up here on the screen. But you have an RJ45 there. Uh, that's for your CAN bus. Now, I was confused about that. In the instructions here, it shows that you use that to plug into your CAN, CAN bus uh, device so you can uh, have them all working off of one, one, one uh, leg, right? <laughs> you don't use it at all. What that one's for is to plug it directly into your pedal. So like you have the P2000 pedals, you could plug your shifter into that P2000 device that they have, which is similar to basically this, which Husenfeld has. So that you have this little this little hook up here for all your, your RJ45. So you would RJ45 to this. Now this is the Husenfeld one, right? But you get the idea. Now what you end up doing is, is using the power cord on there uh, that comes comes on here and you plug that into your uh, CAN bus. So it's a, uh, it's just a one wire that goes from here. That is uh, B to USB basically is what it is. So C to USB B is what it is. All right, like a must have. I wouldn't tell you this is a must have for it because after all, when I go and, and, and rip an e-brake, right? I'm just doing it very suddenly, right? And just to rip it to get the back tires locked and then uh, have the rotation of, of my vehicle. I really only feel it is is once you feel your tires lock up. So it'll be momentarily when you do that. You really got to hold it for about a second to feel this kick in, and then uh, then you feel it because it's it's a slight delay. So if I was to show you in Forza, if I just barely pull on this, you'll see the front end of the car dive a little bit or the back end of the car dive a little bit uh, and start slowing the vehicle down. But until I rip it hard, to actually lock the tires then the haptic will identify that the tires are actually locked and then start vibrating, right? Just like they should. 
but it's, it's such a minimal delay. Where I find that this is actually fun is oddly enough on Forza Horizon 5, which <laughs> My Sim Magic wheel doesn't recognize Forza Horizon 5, so I was, I was uh, I'm actually going to put my Logitech back on and play with this in Forza Horizon 5 more because the, I'm, I'm sorry, the Sim Magic works on it, but I don't have no Force feedback. It's just a deal with, Fer with Horizon uh, Forza games. Uh, all right, so like I was saying, uh, it's just a deal with Forza Horizon uh, 5 software. You have to run a different emulator to get some of these wheels to work. Uh, it, worked, it was just the same with AccuForce. For a long time, AccuForce worked just fine with that game, but then it then it didn't. So, same thing. So, I'm going to plug in my Logitech to play with that. I actually want to check out the GT7 new advancements and they had with uh, Force Feedback. But this is a lot of fun, uh, even though I was still able to play with it, just wasn't having the Force Feedback in my wheel. But Horizon 5, this is a blast to play with in there because you're really just ripping heat brakes a lot, playing around just in an open field or... Or power, power sliding through the uh, through the uh, streets and stuff, and this is where the haptic really kicks in and becomes a lot of fun. So if you're Forza fan, and actually this act uh, automatically works in Forza Eight as well. So if you're a drifter in Forza Eight, uh, you do feel this one. Uh, it just it rocks in Forza Eight. I really like it there. Uh, so I think for kind of the SimK type games, this has become a little bit more fun. But for the serious drifters for like i racing or not drifters but uh rally rally guys uh that would be uh not quite as as needed or it's an extra layer of, of immersion but it's very momentarily to fill it right so anyway up to you it is a little bit costly there as well to have this uh, set up now of course when you buy a three as a pack with with uh with the power brick on there as well it, it's a little bit cheaper when you buy them as a bundle, especially through Apex uh, Sim Racing as well. So if you are interested in them, hey, check out my plug for Apex Sim Racing. <laughs> All right, so next up, cons. Let's go to cons. All right, let's get on to the cons here. Actually, there's not a lot of cons, to be honest, with this with this thing. It, it works just seamlessly well uh, for the most part. Uh, my major con on this thing uh, that, I, that I'm uh, disheartened about is that the software doesn't always recognize this handbrake here. I'm tapping the, the haptic, but uh, it doesn't always recognize the handbrake. When I turn on my, my power switch for everything to come on through the CAN bus, it doesn't always recognize this. And so what I have to do is unplug the power uh, to this, or I'm sorry, the USB from this to the to the CAN bus, which I just plug it, unplug it here on the side, uh, and then plug it back in, and then it recognizes. It doesn't always do it, but it does it more often than not, right? Uh, so that's the only thing I, I have a problem with with this. Maybe it's, I mean, I don't know why. Maybe maybe they need to boost the signal or something. Not sure. But that's the major gripe that I have with this one. So it's a little aggravating for that. Uh, another con would be for some people is the expense 369. Sim racing is expensive. You shouldn't do sim racing at all. You should go outside and play with your kids. Go to the beach. Go do something besides staying in your house playing a video game. But if you are that guy or gal that's doing the video games because it's raining outside, this is a little pricey. So uh, 369 it, it can be kind of expensive for just a handbrake. It's not something you're going to use exclusively. Now, if you're a drifter, then you, this would be your best friend. So if you're doing mainly drifting, which Sim Magic is huge on drifting, so... I can I totally understand why they came out with this product here to make it feel realistic one to one to what a drift car would be with a hydraulic handbrake. Then, then I get it. But for uh, maybe some of the crowds that watch my channel or more into the into the regular racing, maybe not so much drifting and then uh, rally racing as well. So this is great handbrake for rally. I don't mind having it. I didn't mind spending the extra money for it. It's aesthetically, as this whole system looks here. It looks baller to me. <laughs> I really like the way it looks with this all all this setup here between the you know, the handbrake and the uh, sequential and, the, and then of course the uh, handbrake H pattern and the sequential here all works beautifully well together. Uh, so anyway, and the RJ45. The instructions for this was was confusing. It says plug the RJ45 into the CAN bus. There is no way to plug them in because it's literally a phone cable <laughs> that goes in there. So I was confused. Why are you saying this in instructions? So they just need to fix the instructions. Very minor gripe. It doesn't take more than a couple uh, a couple brain cells to figure out what to do, right? Uh, between the two. But at first I'm like, what? Anyway, that's it for the cons. Major con is just that this loses, uh, it doesn't boot up uh, quite right away. Uh, so that's about it.
All right, on to the next, final thoughts. All righty, so final thoughts on, on the handbrake here. It's a magic handbrake. It feels solid. It is just a solid feeling mechanism. It feels like it would, it feels better than your handbrake in your car, in your regular street car. It's, it just feels very robust, strong, and, uh, and just solid with a nice smooth feel uh, to it and because of the hydraulic uh, in there. And then the elastomers, of course, creating the resistance in here as well. So definitely a nice feeling handbrake. Aesthetically, it looks beautiful. Uh, it matches all the other Sim Magic gear as well. Looks really good on your rig. Definitely, Sim racers aren't necessarily just about fit and function, but we also want it to look kick ass too, right? So it does look the part. I really like that. So the return speed on this is also very fast. As you can see, I pull it back. It looks like it's slow, a little bit slower here in the video, uh, just because of the frames per second, I guess, jumping, but it's instant. And you feel that drag come right off uh, off of the uh, your car. Uh, so the return speed is, is fast, as you saw in the software as well. Return speed is fast as well. So being that it's hydraulic with the elastomers, it doesn't seem to uh, slow it down any, uh, pushing back through that hydraulic fluid uh, on the return, right? The only other thing I, I, I probably would say as far as the overall aesthetics of this is the handle itself is not that gorgeous looking. So uh, I'm going to go up here to the hand wheel. Looking at this, it's just okay. It's sufficient. It gets the job done. It feels good. But it makes me want to, I don't know, the kid in me makes me want to poke at it because it's so soft. and. Put your little nail indentions in it. But it feels good. Uh, you have a nice cap. You can't see here, but nice uh, cap that they you know, have, have in the box for you to put on. It's a Sim Magic logo. I, I just would like something more probably like the Husenfeld is. You know, something that's comfortable in the hand, but wider. Uh, I would like a wider grip on here. But it is what it is. Uh, that's really the only downside to this, this here. Besides the power issue that... I mentioned here in the cons. Uh, this isn't always recognized in the in the software right away, and so that becomes a pain because you got to unplug the USB from this and then plug it back in, which is literally right here down below on the side. It's not like it's a huge big deal, but it is just something that if you forget to check your software once you start going out there doing rally racing, and you're like, "Damn it, I don't have a handbrake." <laughs> so it's just something to keep in mind. Also, the, the ha is, uh, haptic system on here is nice. It does work, albeit just a slight delay until your tires are actually locked up. I uh, wouldn't recommend it for rally racing. Uh, for drifting, probably yes, for sure. Forza games, this is an ab absolutely blast to have uh, for the Forza games because you tend to use the handbrake longer in it. You don't just rip it. You'll, you'll hold it and then rotate your car around. and uh, So it becomes more fun with uh, those type of games than uh, just a, a regular rally game. Software is great on this as well. Uh, it, is, it works fine. I would love to see some advancements on the software to where this haptic where you could just use this for engine vibrations or change it for shift points. So for people like me that have the H pattern shifter or even the sequential shifter, when you do a shift, you will uh, feel this buzz or, or have a hard hit of that shift. So just like your transducers would do for you if you had some butt kickers hooked to your system as well. But that would be cool. Now, I have full motion, so it's not really nothing I'm, I feel like I'm missing for that. But I think for the people that don't have motion, that would be nice at additives. But all in all, this is a great handbrake here. I would recommend it if you are someone that wants to have a high-end looking handbrake. It feels great. It just absolutely feels great on here. So there's nothing really too much to really complain about. The handbrakes feels nice, looks nice, gets the job done. All in all, I would recommend this handbrake. I don't recommend the haptic system for it. Uh, I would rather you see you spend your money on using one of these for your brake pedal. So if you are interested in the haptics, by, by all means, it's your money. Spend it if you want to. Uh, I did it for you just to let you know that you don't need to. <laughs> it's not that big of a deal using it unless you're someone that likes playing the SimK games like Forza Horizon games, then this becomes a lot more fun. But if you're just strictly rally racing like WRC and, and uh, Dirt Rally four, uh, 2 and all that, no, I wouldn't get it. And, and in fact, I forgot to mention it. This doesn't even work in WRC as far as EA WRC, the newest one. I did try out the WRC 10. Maybe it works in there. It doesn't work in Dirt Rally 2 either. 
So if you were wanting this to work for those two games, sorry to disappoint you, but it does not work. Uh, so save your money, don't get it. If you're into the Forza games, perfect. It, it would work for that just fine. So that is it out here. I hope you like this review uh, and my thoughts on this product line here from SimMagic. I do enjoy it. I enjoy it on my rig. It's just my unbiased review on here. Buy it if you want to, but at least you got my opinions on it. Alrighty, so until next time, I guess I'll see you on the track. I'm out.